Good evening and welcome to Monumental Accomplishments, a TV show where guests share with us the amazing things they've done. Some guests intrigue us, some guests inspire us. And some guests insult us by making us realize we've done nothing significant with our lives and our dreams have crashed and burned on a late night public access TV show watched exclusively by old people who never learned how to use their remotes. <laughs> Hi, Grandpa! This is my co-host, Bright and Lively, looking as sunny as ever. And this is my co-host, Avery Crossley, who, believe it or not, seems slightly cheerier than usual. Well, I've slept past 12 today, so I have fewer waking hours to be consciously aware of my pitiful existence. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great afternoon. And it's your birthday, too. How's that going? Pretty epic so far. I've had a used candle and a stale pancake and a birthday brunch that I ate alone. Did you wish it to be true? Still hosting the show, so apparently not. Well, speaking of food, I started getting a new diet that's going really well. I nearly dose of three square meals. So, what did you eat today? A piece of toast, a salty cracker, and an individually wrapped slice of imitation cheese. We're going to get this chocolate bar for dessert, but it's more of a rectangle than a square. Why didn't you snap it in half? That would make five square meals, I mean, and that hardly seems like a diet. Okay, enough small talk. Let's get on with the show. Ready. Please welcome our first guest, Parker Milton. Hi, Parker. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Tell us about your monumental achievements. Well, I haven't won an award or done anything to improve the world. That's okay. We all measure success in different ways. Writing here doesn't measure things at all. It's so confusing. A ruler is a foot, but it's bigger than my foot. And a yardstick is a yard, but it's smaller than my yard. And a cup is a cup, but all my cups are different sizes. You see? Nothing to be ashamed about. Now tell us what you've done. Well, I bought my first house. That is a monumental achievement. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's on Virginia Avenue. How are you feeling about your big purchase? Excited. A little worried, too, I guess. I spent just about everything I had. You sure it was a good idea? Well, I have some money coming around the corner. I should get some back with her, too. It's in a great location, right by the railroad. Well, I hope it works out for you. Thanks. For now, I'm just glad to have a safe place to lay my hat. Lay my hat. There's an expression you don't hear every day. It wasn't an expression. I was talking about an actual hat. It does seem a little old-fashioned. I suppose I have been out of things for a while. I spent some time in jail. Jail? Would you mind if I ask why? It wasn't anything serious. I took a chance and it turned out badly. How long were you in? Three turns. Turns? Rolls of the dice. Luckily, I tossed them the deuce and snatched the house for a hundred bucks. Hold up. You bought a Monopoly house? I could hardly buy a real house for a hundred bucks. Well, it must feel really good to be S Stop. Back it up. Let's try this again. <laughs> Buying property in a board game. It is not a monumental achievement. You don't know how bad the game was going. I know how bad this show is going. <laughs> I've done other amazing things too. On the Monopoly board? Yes, but there's more. Terrific, what is it? I solved the murder. Maybe you should have led with that. It was Professor Plum, in the study with the Kansas City. <laughs> okay, we're done. But there's things we haven't talked about. I made it to Candy Castle. I don't have to fight them. I've been a very hungry hippo. That's surprising. <laughs> You've clearly lost your marbles. Okay, I think we'll move to another guest now. Already? Playing board games will never result in a monumental achievement. What if I play a Scrabble word worth a thousand points? Improbable. I don't think improbable would work. I would need a word with a bunch of Z's and Q's. What if I made an octuple jump in checkers? Eight jumps in a single move? Yep. That, that would be amazing. <sighs> sure would. So you haven't actually done it. No, but I can dream, right? You sure can. As a matter of fact, if you leave right now, you can go home, go to sleep, and start dreaming right away. Huh. Here, I'll play something for you as we go. Angry Birds? Ooh, Tetris. Exit music. I've got so many good songs on here. Perfect. There. I don't hear anything. We can't afford the royalties for music, so the volume's down. <laughs> Just imagine a classic rock beat with ironically appropriate lyrics. Cleverly playing about. I'll do my best. Maybe someday you can come back with a non game that you've read. I actually have one of those. What is it? I finished the book. You read one? No. I put pen to paper and tore ink and passion into every page. You wrote a book? I had scrambled all the words, found all the hidden pictures, and made it to the end of all the mazes. I'm just going to <laughs> wave the phone to you and come directly to you off. <laughs> Walking the 
the same interview I was? I don't know. Which one are you watching? Well, folks, like a movie from the MGM Studios, this show is off to a roaring start. I'm confused. The lion from the MGM Studios? Never mind, it was lame. The lion was injured? No, the reference was lame. MGM will start with a roaring lion. Off to a roaring start. Rawr! That was a really good lion impression. Hard to believe my talent didn't take me further. It could take you lots of places. It could be like Narnia, or Oz, or Madagascar. Don't you wish some of those places were real? Kinda wish this place wasn't. Well, it looks as though our next guest is ready to go. Please welcome Dr. Knox Donahue. Not so far, but we're happy to have you on the show. Maybe you're just happy to get rid of that first guest. <laughs> right. Wait. What? The happiness you're experiencing may be more about the situation you've gotten yourself out of rather than the one you're currently in. Or when I said we're happy to have you, I was just ad libbing an introduction. In my profession, I don't believe in ad libbing. You're obviously not a freestyle rapper. I'm a doctor of psychology. Well, Dr. Psych would make an awesome rap name. Feel free to use it if you ever change careers. So, there are no ad libs? No ad libs and no accidents. There's a deeply rooted psychological explanation behind our every word and action. I wrote about it in my book. What was your book called? There's a deeply rooted psychological explanation behind our every word and action. <laughs> it didn't so well. Do you think there was a reason for that? Do you think it was badly written? I'm not here to talk about my book. I'm here to talk about my monumental achievement. I just wanted to show you the world that the world that I was only just an intellectual, and that I could complete a task of pure physical strength. What did you do? I climbed to the top of Mount Highness. Really? For those of you who don't know, Mount Highness is a giant cavernous mountain at the edge of town. A steep and deadly peak in the heart of a dark forest that few have attempted and none have conquered. Until today. Today? Well, I got back to it moments ago, actually. I'm still catching my breath. Can you prove this? He does seem to be breathing kind of heavy. Can you prove you climbed Mount Highness? Ooh, did you leave something on top to prove you were there? What good would that do? It's not like you have a helicopter to fly up and check. True. I can't even afford a car. I do a skateboard, though. Kind of. It's an old pair of skates down to a broken bookshelf. <laughs> it's not a way to put a bookshelf to use. That's a positive way to look at it. No, no, it's not. I think Dr. Syke is being insulting, suggesting you don't read. Were you really being mean? I think I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, there must have been a reason for insulting me, right? If you consider being a jerk a reason. No, no, it's deeper than that. First, you made light of my book sales, questioning my intellectual genius. Then you acted suspicious of the Mount Highness claim. Casting doubt on my physical prowess. That wasn't our intent at all. It may have been mine. You can't be rude to our guests, Avery. So Dr. Psych gets away with the bookshelf crack? Don't be silly. The bookshelf was cracked before the doctor even got here. My subconscious must have acted up. It will happen again. I'm just trying to tell the world about making it to talk about kindness. But it's kind of mental battle. And now you're making puns! Am I? How exciting? I've never done that before. Why do you insist on mocking me? This was an incredible accomplishment. A huge mental challenge set me to the peak, and an extreme physical test framing the descent. I have done what no other has done before me. Well, I just hope you took a moment to enjoy the view. We did. We? My twin and I. We assumed you climbed to the highest alone. That's your fault, not mine. You never mentioned your twin before. Did you mention your twin? This is getting weird. Sure is. I didn't even know I had a twin. <laughs> Can you just talk about me and what I've done, please? You mean what you and your twin have done? Yes, of course. Funny how you keep forgetting to mention the other person with you. There must be a reason for that, too, right? I think someone is trying to hog the spotlight. That's outrageous! You. You don't even have a spotlight! Why isn't your twin here with you? I forgot to bring him. To the show or down from the mountain? I did not stray my twin on a deadly mountain. Purpose. <laughs> I thought you said they were an accident. There's going to be one if you don't stop these accusations. I demand proper credit for what I've done. The police can give you what you deserve. Authorities are no threat to me. I shall return to the scene of my triumph, reclaim Mount Highness as my own, and prove my intellectual and physical superiority to the world. <laughs> I 
another unbelievable guest. Yes, truly fascinating. No, I mean, unbelievable as in, I'm not sure much of that I believe. Well, how many more do we have? Well, that's two down. And unless that was all true, it's two down and one up on a mountain, strengthened by an evil twin doctor. Ooh, there's an evil twin doctor on my finger, Chuck. A soap opera? That's all in the middle. You speak Spanish? Nope, I just don't know how to use your mouth. Is that something you inherited from your grandfather? No, it came with my TV. Well, your grandfather's watching tonight, right? Always does. Love you, Grandpa. We should keep going, then. Don't want to disappoint the one viewer we know we have. Right. Please welcome Jess Thor. And Jess hasn't arrived. Even our guests have stopped paying attention. What should we do now? I'll play some music to kill time. Ooh, I get some happy birthday. That would not be a good idea. Because of royalties? No, oh, because you can't. <coughs> yes, royalties. I'm here, I'm here. Yes? Yes, I didn't think I'd make it. Neither did we. Nice of you to get dressed for the show. Sorry, I was running late. Put on my coat. Will you tie your robe in a very fancy bow? More than not, really. Couldn't undo it. Had to pull the rope on over my head like a shirt. Because you couldn't find the shirt? Not one fit would tell me. I did walk my best pair of shorts. Didn't dry them though. Or put them on. But they're clean. <laughs> so why were you so behind schedule? Let's just say I was very busy trying to clean my goal. You were? Nah, let's just say that so I don't have to admit to oversleep. Sleeping before the show. That's new. Most people sleep during it. Look, I don't need to make a bad impression. I really am glad to be here. I'm just a little unmotivated sometimes. That's completely understandable. Good, because I started falling asleep halfway through and what I was saying was afraid I'd run Why don't we get started then, before you doze off completely? Right, so can I tell you about my amazing feet? You mean your monumental accomplishments? That too, but I mean my amazing feet. I don't scrub them, so I built up a protective and somewhat decorative coat. Saves a bundle of socks. Want to sit close up? Not by a long shot. We don't have that time. Or patience. Right. My accomplishment then. I did something really cool to impress one of the local karaoke bar. Was the person you impressed one of the performers? Huh? Was the person you impressed one of the performers at the karaoke bar? I wasn't aware they had entertainment. Why did you go then? Free refills on ginger ale and bottomless bowls of peanuts. Also, I have a big crush on the bartender. And the bartender is always talking about the Beatles. Ew, they have bugs in the bar? They probably crawl up through the bottomless bowls. The Beatles, as in the music group. Right. I learned every song the Beatles ever did. That's impressive. I wanted to show that I was willing to make an effort. Well, you certainly dressed the part. So, what do you play? Play? The Beatles used all kinds of instruments in their songs. Piano, bass, guitar. It's so, what do you play? It's guitar, Avery. Oh, uh, I'm not a musician. A vocalist, then? <laughs> not a professional. Me either. I do like to sing around the house, though. Nothing like the acoustics of a shower, right? Never tried that. The singing or the shower? Not a fan of either. I just thought learning all the songs would be a cool romantic gesture. Definitely. So, how long did it take to learn the lyrics? Lyrics? Oh my gosh! Could you imagine that? That would have taken forever. Stop. <laughs> Back it up. Let's try this again. When you say you learned every song the Beatles ever made, you meant you learned the titles. <laughs> Unbelievable. They did record over 200 songs. So, how did you go about learning them? Chronologically, by lead singer? The Beatles had more than one singer. They had four. <laughs> of course, Ringo sang a bit less than the others. Mm -hmm. Ringo Starr, the drummer. Not the original, of course. That was Pete Fest. Look, I don't have a research staff to give, dig up obscure trivia to make me look smart. I just came here to share my excited accomplishment. And we're excited to hear about it. Aren't we, Avery? Yes, you should. 
Get back to your story. Thank you. Get back to your story. Get it? I heard it's missing. I'm just saying, I'm glad we could all come together on the show. <laughs> I could talk about the Beatles eight days a week because I am the walrus. <laughs> you have a show. <laughs> not yet. You need to work on that walrus impression. It's not nearly as good as your lion. <laughs> so, how did you learn all the songs? I'm in not bad coolness. Clever. Can you share with us? I'd love to. Ooh, God bless you. Can you see how you do it? I can certainly share it with you after. After? After I read it. You had it memorized it? Aren't supposed to have a research staff and a photographic memory? I... just... <laughs> go ahead. Abbey Road, Anthology 1, Anthology 2, Anthology 3, The Beatles. Those aren't songs, those are albums. Yes, but the songs are on the albums. <laughs> Learning them this way saves so much time. <laughs> yeah, speaking of time, it seems we're all out of it for this segment. Think my list will press the mountain? Now, that should be a monumental achievement. Then I come back again? Absolutely not. <laughs> I do not think it means what you think it means. What was that? I was quoting the Princess Bride. Ooh, which one? Cinderella, Snow White, Sleeping <laughs> Beauty? Wait, Sleeping Beauty has a name. What was it? Sleepy? Snoozy? Can't believe I don't remember. Aurora. Look at you. I stress out and you're stupid to cheer me up with your lion impression. Aurora. <laughs> was that a lady lion that time? Ooh, was it Nala? Is she a princess? I know she's a queen when she marries Simba. Wait, do lions get married? I'm confused. Confused. Now that's a word we all know the meaning of. And if our last guest is anything like the others, we can all be confused together. Sounds like fun. Please welcome Gwen Arden. <laughs> So quick, tell us about your monumental achievements. Well, it's not just mine. Half the credit goes to my fine feathered friend. Ooh, is it a bird? I the friend to have feathers. A Native American chief wearing a ceremonial headdress, a soft little smiley face, a dancer with one of those fluffy colorful scarves. A boa? I don't think snakes have feathers. <laughs> so quick, what have you and your bird done? I have trained him to recite Shakespeare. Uh, and when you say, recite Shakespeare, I don't assume you mean he just says the word, Shakespeare. He says lots of things. Speeches, soliloquies, sonnets. So, only words that start with S? He speaks full sentences, with a British accent and everything. The lady doth protest too much, he thinks. I think. So, how long did it take to train your parrot? He is not a parrot. Parakeet? No! Cockatoo? No! Raven of the Midnight Fury? He is a duck! A <laughs> duck? Yes, I named him Mac Duck! Mac ah. Duck. <laughs> Sounds like something I don't know what to would shake and it fries. It's actually a pun on the name Mac Duff from the Scottish play. Ooh, Disney has a character called Scrooge McDuck. Top hat, glasses, bags of money. Different duck! Yeah, it's somehow more believable. So, how did you and Max up me? I was reading Shakespeare aloud in the woods when I started to hear my words come back to me. At first, I thought it was an echo, but I noticed a group of ducks sitting across the pond. I figured one of them was communicating with me. Because that's much more logical than an echo. <laughs> I decided to call the talk. So I showed a duck, and everyone swimming in the pond went like this. <laughs> also means get out of the way? No, because all the ducks flew and thinking I was calling them. Do you have the power to summon ducks? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I dreamt of in your philosophy. <laughs> How did you find out 
find that duck in a crowd of ducks? Well, none of them were talking at first, so I decided to read Shakespeare as I walked along a path, and McDuck was the only one who followed me. Were you leaving breadcrumbs? No, though I did eat a sandwich and tossed pieces of the crust behind me at steady intervals, <laughs> deep into the woods, we set up camp, and delved into the bar. Is that the name of the river? We stayed up all night. I recited lines and McDuck repeated them. Are you sure you weren't imagining or dreaming things because you were retired from the height? And the swim? We were totally refreshed. Found a delicious patch of wild mushrooms, <laughs> which made a perfect snack. <laughs> we recited to be or not to be, friends, Romans, countrymen. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. We really chuckled about that. Since ducks are foul. I think ducks are kind of sweet. They are with the right kind of salt. It was a transcendent night. Things took a sad turn in the morning. Oh my, what happened? I got a little ambitious. Shakespeare elevated England and explored for a little themes, but everyone knows the greatest form of theatrical expression is musical theater. You talk with duck show tunes? I tried, but it did not go as planned. Let's start with Chicago, I said. My duck moved away a bit. I figured he didn't like Bob Fosse, so I suggested we shift to Oklahoma. My duck moved even further away. It was obvious he thought Chicago and Oklahoma were locations I was suggesting he migrate to. Thank goodness I didn't say South Pacific. <laughs> Greece refers to hair gel and motor oil, not the European country. They spell differently. I mean, that's not stupid. <laughs> so what did you do? I tried to think of a musical with a non-location title. I made a poor choice in shouting cats. Is that what got you wanting to invent a natural enemy? No, I think he just really hates the movie. Anyway, McDuck flew to the top of the tree. I panicked and shouted out the most innocuous musical I could think of. Bye bye, Purdy. And the duck, thinking I was bidding him farewell, shed a tear, lifted a wing to wave, and flew off, never to be seen again. So, quick, you have nothing to show us for your monumental achievements. I have my memories. But nothing to show us on our show to prove this happened. I can demonstrate what he sounded like. You want to imitate a duck? I wish to pay tribute to an artist who lost by recreating, through the best of my ability, his distinctive voice and the brilliance of his craft. <laughs> Sounds lovely.
Wait, we have a fifth. What do you mean? Someone thinks it asked me if we could sneak them in. There aren't right now. <laughs> I did not realize they were literally going to sneak in. It's for us. And for us. We can only stay a few minutes. Well, that's longer than you were originally scheduled. The name's Taylor. I can't reveal my last name, but I will flash my identification for, for authentication purposes. Welcome to the show, Taylor. Tell us about your monumental achievement. I discovered the secret of time travel. Which is? Something that must remain a secret. Okay, thanks for coming. I'm glad to chat. Oh, wait, I can talk a little. I just need to keep the details secret for the time being. The time being? Is that a magical entity who controls the future? It's a common phrase that means for now. So, when did you invent time travel? Forty years from today. So it hasn't happened yet? It has in my timeline. I'm confused. You're confused about time in general. Right from this bathroom by the clock tower downtown because it's not digital. That thing has three hands. Three. Everything else in the world has two or four. If odd number of hands is not natural. Forty years from today is later for us because we are starting today. Taylor started forty years from today, then came here. So his today is our later. You believe me then? Not at all. But I understand the logic of your lie. Not a lie. I really am the future. Well, you know about a clock tower. All you need is a DeLorean and a lightning strike, and you can go back to the future. Not how it works. I did enjoy those movies though. The first three anyway. They only made three. They're five now. The future's full of sequels and reboots. Fascinating. Of course, I want to stop making time travel movies now that I've mentioned it. They got it all wrong. All the old ones did. Avengers Endgame, Avengers Endgame 2, Back to the Endgame, Avengers Endgame 3, and all the games. Making up movie titles doesn't prove it in the future. Although, as a side note, I would totally watch every one of those. <laughs> I know it's not true of my story. I mean, I can tell you the name Future President. Or the wind rose, so you think you want to be America's next stop master of a bachelor chef? I can even tell you the name of America's next stop master of a bachelor chef who becomes president, but you still have to wait years to verify it. Next top mask survivor bachelor chef. It sounds so fun. The chefs cook many bachelors who are voted out. It's actually very dark. No, I really want this to be true. Did you bring anything from the future to prove you're from there? I'm trying to kind of way. Wait, my phone. Especially designed to, with the retro look to perfectly resemble the original product. It was cool when I got it, but I'm not sure what it was like on it. It helps me blend in, though. Let's pretend your story is true for a moment. Why tell us? For legal reasons, I can announce my discovery. So there's recorded proof. But to protect my secrets, I'll do it for the smallest possible audience. So you came here. Exhaustive research revealed that this episode of Monumental Accomplishments is the least watched television broadcast in history. In all of history? The podcast in Siberia about air conditioner repair to a bigger audience. I don't think they use air conditioners in Siberia. Pretty sad, isn't it? I don't know. They probably take a lot of money in their electric bills. Checked all forms of media. Newspapers, radio stations, even internet sites. None of them are true people than to abuse men. Our very own Monumental Accomplishments. You tuned in on a special night. Nobody tuned in, writes in. That's what makes it special. Nobody? Not even my grandpa? Maybe he figured out how to use the remote to change channels. Maybe. You're from the future, do you know? Let's just say your grandfather's in a better place. Ooh, I hope he's chill, Ocho. Grandpa would love my family. Of all the times and places you can go, you chose our low-rated talk show tonight? Seems like a waste of energy. Time travel doesn't use energy. Time travel doesn't use energy. At least, not any that's been invented. I may have said too much. And yet, nothing at all. I just have to be careful. Careful? No one's watching. Even I'm thinking of taking it now. No one's watching now, but they will. Millions of them. Your least watched television broadcast, watching the most new video in history. Because you announced time travel? That's how it starts. Conspiracy fans try to dissect my story. We both discover other reasons to watch too. Like what? Like first TV. The first TV 
first TV appearance? Parker Milton. The game player? The game changer. Super rich philanthropist of the future. Strategic genius. Helps the military send battleships. Built a map of mass trap. Definitely when you get the game cliff. All that planning actually paid off? Paid off a lot of things. Parker won the first million dollars on the game show called Lucky Duck. I can still picture Parker high five and duck at the end of the bonus speed rounds. So like duck? The talking duck. They were on the game show together. The host of Lucky Duck is an actual duck? Don't be ridiculous. The host is a robot. But Duck is Slugby that helps contestants answer trivia. Shakespeare, show tunes, geography, he's amazing. Never props on the pressure. And this is Matthew Duck. It's a celebrity. It is Quinn imitated him on our talk show. People love that impression. Matt Duck really became famous when he rescued someone who was scared on top of Mount Hainus. You mean Mount Hainus? It was really named Mount Hainus when Knox on here and moved into a giant cave up there. Why does Dr. Knox need a cave? Wouldn't be much of a super villain without a new layer. The psychologist became a super villain? Right here on the show. The interview plays on the origin story. You is just a super villain name. Dr. Sutton. It's thrilling to watch Sense of Madness happen in real time. I mean, Dr. Sutton has done some horrible things, but it's great TV. Couldn't you time travel back a few guys earlier and stop the whole super villain thing from happening? Actually, that would have been a great thing. But it would have been too risky. Would it have saved people but killed the ratings? No, well, maybe. It's complicated. Everything has to flow awkwardly now. This turns out an amazing flavor. What about Jesse and the Beatles? Guys? Wait, let me guess. Dr. Sight manipulates the human mind, eradicating all memories of popular music, making Jesse's sprawl note of album titles the only recorded proof the Beatles ever existed. Nope, Jesse's just an idiot. <laughs> so, so this doesn't lead to love? Not for Jess. Bring it back. If you must know, the list inspires two of you to talk about the Beatles during Candlelight Meal after tonight's show. We never talk after the show. We barely talk during the show. <laughs> Things change. Hands touch. Sparks fly. There's a romance, a marriage, and a child who grows up to perform a monumental achievement to their own. A child? That's impossible. A child who defies the impossible. A child who discovers the secret of time travel. I thought you discovered the secret of time travel. I did, using things I inherited from each other's parents. Makeshift skateboard forged from a bookshelf. Harness from my ability to roar like a lion. You're saying you're our child? Our child? I am. And this is true? <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> oh man, that was hilarious. I know the neighbors and people doing it. That gotcha guy is considered one of the classic pranks of all time. You should have seen your faces. I'm confused. Actually, you will see your face. A photo of you saying that catchphrase becomes a popular with me. Stop. Back it up. Let's try this again. And that Stop. comes out here for a TikTok dance. Stop. Back it up. Let's try this again. <laughs> Stop. Back it up. Let's so, try you're this. admitting. Stop. So, you're admitting that everything you said up until now was made up? Just the last part. Which last part? The war powered skateboard, or the candlelit dinner feels chat, or the hands touching, sparks flying, romance marriage baby thing? Only time to tell. Oh, it's time. I got it back on. What should we do when you leave? Celebrate? You don't need to do anything. Just wrap up the show at normal and go viral. That does not mean we get sick. Just give a little time and show a little off. I promise. That does not mean you explode. Okay. A feeling will happen, that's supposed to happen. There's going to be a perfect storm. That does not mean severe weather. <laughs> Actually, in this case, it does. What? We're going to be by some kind of tornado, tidal wave, meteor shower, aren't we? No, no, nothing like that. It's an earthquake or a day lightning storm. What? The great the perfect damage, though. So I just can't stay to see it. Why not? I gotta get back to the clock tower, so let me start the car be back. Those of you who's got some of the things, right? Well, good luck. Goodbye. Good grief. That storm thing was another joke, right? This whole show is a joke. Should we sign off to be safe? We should sign off to be done. Right. Well, folks, we've reached the end of another episode of Monumental Accomplishments. 
Thanks to our fascinating interrogators for their fascinating stories. Or inane babble. Either way, you've made me feel worse about my life than when we first started. And thanks to everyone for watching, too. Not now, I guess, but in the future. A future filled with time travel, talking ducks, and evil supervillains. If we survive the storm... That's not going to happen. We're not going to survive? No, oh, we're not going to get hit by an earthquake, hurricane, lightning storm. Are you sure? I feel trembly. You're shaking because you're nervous. I hear wind. You're hyperventilating. I hear rumbling. Thunder! That's your stomach. You've got to eat more than cheese, crackers, and toast. You don't believe anything weird is true? I'll believe it when at least one thing actually does. It's my grandpa. He is in a better place. I'm sorry? Me too. He sent a photo he sent a selfie from a late night bingo party. But he promises to watch next week. See, Taylor was right. How about one thing. Okay, thank you. This is the right side. 